Hey guys, how you all doing? Hyde here. I figured I'll actually uh, install Mike's uh, easy BMW tool, so I'll just unpack it here. Now, uh, I actually found out about it uh, recently. Uh, apparently it's a one-click install and uh, includes INPA 5.0.6 and a new version of Adibus, NCS Expert, NCS Dummy, Tool32, WinKFP. The best thing about it uh, that really intrigued me was um, this actually allows us to go with Rheingold ISTA, as in upgrade to it. Now, as you all know, uh, ISTA is BMW's newest uh, diagnostic software. INPA has been uh, kind of phased out. Now, that said, uh, previously I was actually using um, INPA 5.0.2, uh, which I managed to get running with uh, some hesitations uh, from uh, 328 Power 04. Now, that's in the Beamer forums of Chrome. Now, I'll actually be linking both of these topics, uh, but let's uh, get down to the installation itself. Now, as you see, I have already uh, unpacked all the contents here, and it's only one file. So, uh, well, I'm not really sure if I should run this in compatibility or not, but uh, I will, just, uh, just, just, just in case, you never know. So I'll just run this in uh, compatibility mode, I think, that might be the best uh, choice, Windows 7. Okay, let's try this. Alright. Ah, Mike's Easy BMW Tools. Nice. Now, I've already installed INP a few times, uh, so I know what the deal is. Haven't tried this before. It seems quite well made, doesn't it? I mean, I was gonna make a video about uh, installing INPA using the older versions and the multi step. Uh, variations I had, but if this actually works, then that will be great. As this installs, uh, actually I would like to show you guys the interface I like using. Uh, now this is a FT232RL, okay, that's a chip, make sure it's the real chip. It doesn't matter, I already have the uh, drivers from my cable. Now when you actually buy one of these cables, they're available on eBay, don't go with the expensive ones, go with these ones. Uh, now, um, these cables work just fine for most of the time. Uh, the cable I actually used was, um, a few times was this. Let's actually go to the... Oh, well, it's actually completed. Unbelievable. Now, uh, I always recommended this guy, uh, this seller I've bought from him before. Now that's the cable I have, I've used uh, some of these cables, and sometimes they don't work. Anyway, one other thing I wanted to tell you guys was um, about the um, connector itself. Um, you might actually have a BMW data link connector on your engine bay, or you might have a usual uh, OBD plug, uh, what do you want to call it, uh, in your cabin. It'll be something like this. Now if it's inside your cabin, it'll probably be under your kick panel. And if it's in the engine bay, it'll probably be something like this. Hmm? So if you have it on the engine bay, usually for a bit older cars, uh, you'll need one of these as well. The 20 pin to 16 pin adapter. Also, uh, another interface I wanted to show you guys was the uh, Tiny ABS. If you have an older car, I mean this thing apparently works brilliantly. Here we go. The uh, full version, I think uh, they sell it pre-made for about $63. Now the ADS interface is a fully serial interface, it's not going to work uh, like your uh, USB uh, serial adapter, you know, it's, it's, a, it's the real deal. So if you have an older car, let's say M50 uh, motor, you know, OBD1, maybe you got a E34, V8, this and that, maybe a E32, you're gonna want one of these instead. So here's here's this this one I wanted to show you guys. Um, yeah, that's that's about it. Let's let's get back to the installation. Oh, sweet. Okay, now I'm not sure if uh, 
AMC is expert is going to run on Windows 10 or not, but we'll see. Okay, here are the instructions. Uh, I'm quite surprised that it installed so fast. I'll actually check if my um, serial to a USB uh, connector was installed or not. Now remember, before you connect this uh, thing to your laptop, usually it will automatically install the drivers, but whichever port you use is going to be the only port you'll ever be able to use uh, in the future. So uh, keep that in mind. Well, uh, I copied the drivers to the desktop and uh, now I'll actually uh, try to uh, manually update the drivers just so that I can, uh, you know, let's go browse, desktop, here we go, well this should really do it, I'm hoping it does anyway, now let's see, hmm, Okay, I think uh, that should have installed it. Alright, hooray! Perfect! Alright guys, so I uh, had to manually install the driver. Now, uh, here's the other step. Uh, here's the other step. Uh, okay. Now, go to port settings. Go to advanced. Now, we'll probably have to change it to 1 because uh, that's why it probably installed itself to so COM port 1. And latency, we'll have to change it to uh, 1 as well. Okay. Well, I think that's about it. I think that should be about it. I mean, uh, that's all it says. So uh, we'll go out and test it out and see if it actually works on the car. Hmm? Hey guys, forgot to tell you all that I updated to this driver here. I also had this one on my hard drive. Now, reason I updated to it was after reading up on this topic. Um, this actual link to uh, certain drivers, this Google Drive in particular, and I'm using uh, this one here. Although you can get the latest drivers from ftdichip.com, um, these are known to work. I'll be putting all the links on the description. Right, everyone, we're now in my garage. The cables and laptop have now been hooked up to the car. And uh, let's try IMPA. Alright, this is detected fine. Now I'm going to turn the keys on just so the ECU turns on. start the car up and uh, go from there. Maybe I can read some live values as well. like this was an absolute success. The tool is quite good actually, I didn't expect it to run so smoothly, even my uh, older installations I follow with. Anyway, I'm glad that I got this running, I hope this helps.